Hello in game fans, among all the hustle and bustle of E3, you might have missed a little event named the IGN Expo which was actually front and centre last year, where the folks over there have once again managed to snag a number of awesome reviews, so here are my top 12 indie game picks. Just a quick aside, the fantastic martial arts brawler Sifu from developer Slowcat is technically indie but not so indie at the same time since the team is at least 30 percent strong if not more, so something to note but the game does look awesome. Let's begin with Haunted Space, one of the most interesting mishmash of ideas and genres in that it's a space dogfighting flight sim that has you piloting various ships with the expected action, trading and crafting, but it's actually crossed with cosmic horror and multi-stage boss battles. While not exactly my genres of choice, I do have to give props to the developer for doing something fresh in the space where the gigantic bosses are impressive and a sight to behold. One of the more deceptive games out there is Doki Doki Literature Club, a horror game that masquerades as a visual novel with anime waifus, getting an enhanced re-release as the plus version which adds 6 new side stories and more unlockable images, music tracks and more. The original was a free title, but this enhanced re-release will not be and does also make the jump to consoles which would affect how you interact with the game as players of the original might know. Still, an interesting release which should reach a new audience. From deceptively cute to just plain adorable, the cleverly named Skate Bird is one where you play as a skateboarding bird, having to pull off sick tricks and stunts just like the Birdman himself. It's set in the real world, where everything from coffee tables, books and stationery form the playable area, and playing as a bird, it does allow you to flap your wings and flutter just to get a little bit more air, so if you love the Tony Hawk games, certainly check this out. There were quite a number of horror games during the event, where Brembo the Mountain King is one of the more visceral and gory ones shown off. It's inspired by Nordic folklore which I'm sure does have their share of horrifying and disturbing stories which are not mainstream enough to be commonplace, which adds to the creep factor but I do have to give a quick little scare warning for the end of the trailer, so skip ahead if you're not into this genre. Core Keeper is a pixel art sandbox survival crafting title, almost like Terraria crossed with Forager, so if you enjoyed this genre, it's a promising one to watch. Interestingly, it does support co-op for up to 8 players, including elements like base building, farming, crafting and more, looking like a very mechanically dense title that looks fun with friends.
quick little trailer for Unbound Worlds Apart, a gorgeous looking puzzle platformer that many people have been looking forward to, but its release date was revealed during the stream. We saw when we played in the woods. She has a crooked nose with a yucky wart. It's just the long grey hair that makes her look old, but she's pretty young actually. She owns a black kitty. She built herself a shelter out of wood and pieces of old cloth. I think it was standing on a chicken leg. It's made of gingerbread, chocolate candy, and a lot of icing. Or bones. She cooks in a big black cauldron over the fire. Probably bats. Spiders. Mushrooms. She can always smell a child when it's close. Always. You want to know if all of that was real? Well, even if it wasn't before, it certainly is now. Or did she have a hunting bow? A creepy action title that looks fantastic is Black Tail, one that has you exploring the story of the Baba Yaga of Slavic myths, a character that has been gaining mainstream popularity via John Wick, the action adventure title Yaga, and even the parody JRPG Cthulhu Saves Christmas, where you get to play as her in first person in this game. The trailer is well done, combining gorgeous hand drawn art and animation, which then shifts to beautiful 3D visuals, although I am curious about the overall structure of this game. <laughs> A title that has showed up on the channel before is the wonderful hand-drawn Inculinati, a side-scrolling turn-based tactics RPG that doesn't take itself too seriously, getting a new teaser trailer, although we still do not have a date. Very excited to share the beautiful animated trailer for Black Skylands, an open world action title where you build and fly your own skyship, exploring floating islands while fending off pirates and monsters. It's a self styled sky punk title where both the ship and land combat looks fantastic, and based on impressions that I have seen of the prologue demo, should be one to watch in the coming months. I like how there's a home base that you can build and improve, using that to research and unlock additional upgrades which gives it a compelling gameplay loop. And the best part is that it's releasing in early access next month, so we will all get to play really soon.
The IGN Expo did kick off with a bang since Mortal Shell The Virtuous Cycle DLC started off the show, and while it was only a cinematic trailer, the core game, if you have not played it, is an impressive indie Souls-like title with some new tricks up its sleeve. Not too many details have been revealed, but this trailer does show off transforming weapons like Bloodborne, and if you've been holding out due to epic exclusivity, you'll be pleased to know that it comes to Steam this summer. I know what you're thinking. Who is that gorgeous amphibian, and how can I be as successful as him? Well, I'll tell you, kiddo. You gotta come to Radlandia, the place of opportunity, where even the ice cream's dreams of hitting the big time. You see these guys? They've got that go-getting attitude, making it happen in the streets. And oh, the streets, kid! Forget paved with gold. Here, there's nothing but miles of the smoothest concrete ramps and grinds everywhere. Makes you want to grab your board and... Hold on, you can skate, right? Whatever, you pick it up! Or not. Look, it's fine. Your skills, my connections, ain't nothing we can't achieve. There's a whole world out there to discover. It's time to shine, my humanoid friend. Let's roll! I mentioned the gorgeous looking Oli Oli world when it was first revealed, noting that the change in art style certainly helps as compared to the look of the first two games, getting a sweet world building trailer at the event. The skateboarding action will be familiar to fans of the series, but does look to have so much more variety beyond the more linear levels of the first two games, even allowing you to, get this, skate from right to left, showing how to do a sequel right or retaining the core of what made the series great, so I cannot wait for this. Ali Ali world, take a trip. Sorrow resonates through the kingdoms. I can feel it in the air, a fermenting thirst for revenge. Of course, Death's Gambit Afterlife takes the number one spot, the long awaited revamp and content drop for the 2D Souls like title from 2018. I mentioned in the video linked above that this developer has been planning for this relaunch, adding new levels, bosses, weapons, talents, multi-classing, metroidvania style upgrades, extending the story, and adding new alternate endings, just to mention the big changes, so it's awesome that we finally get a look at this. Nothing to preserve their immortality. While well, it was a little rough at launch in 2018 due to balancing issues, the subsequent patches did get the game to a great place, which is a great foundation to work with. You lack the conviction to do what is necessary. Fate is not... Best of all, it's a free update, so do show some love to the developers that do that, although we do not have a date for this just yet. However, for being one of the best looking pixel art titles and among the best 2D Souls-like games, it takes the number one spot. For more upcoming Souls-like titles, check out these videos and I will see you after the jump. You remember our deal, don't you?